Hey guys, welcome. This is a vlog about personal vows based on my experience as a wedding videographer for so many years. It's very obvious that one of the most anticipated and most heartwarming, most kilig moment for me in a wedding are the personal vows. It's been quite a roller coaster. We've had our ups and downs, our twisties and twirlies. But we never let go. It's truly beautiful and extremely personal. Couples pouring their hearts out for friends and family, stating their gratitude and promises for all to hear. It's always a moment. My love, we're finally here after almost seven years. When we started dating in 2011, you were a breath of fresh air. You made me feel alive. Doing what I've been doing for so long, you can probably say I've practically heard everything said by one person to another. A bride to a groom, a groom to a bride, a groom to a groom, or a bride to a bride. From rock and roll music quotes, to sonnets of love from Gibran or Neruda, to their own anecdotes from their own relationships. With you, I know I can dream. You moved to the Philippines so we could build a life together. And I can't say how grateful I am that I have you in my life. Some people trace their roots to how they started, mulling over the almost impossibility of them getting together. Thus the line, who would have thought? Who knew that going to the worst student bar in town on a rainy Tuesday evening to celebrate your friend's birthday can actually lead to us standing here on an island in the Philippines 10 years later getting married? I wouldn't say it's overused, but it's just a simple encapsulation of how odds were stacked against their favor. Yet here they are, getting married. Who would have thought? Di ko alam anong nagawa ko to deserve this, pero Lord, wala nang bawian na. Of course, it's always nice to enumerate the reasons why you fell in love with the first place, why you're getting married in the first place. From the small and mundane, the trivial matters like saving the best part of Max's fried chicken and giving it to your other. That would be the skin part, of course. And maybe perhaps not failing to say goodnight every night for the entirety of the relationship. To the big things like unfailing commitment and a shared vision in life. A guy who is family-oriented and loves his mom because that's how he will love me. Lastly, the vows. That's what they're called after all. Vows, promises, the till death do us part stuff, the heavy hitters, all that beautiful stuff. The day before Christ, family and friends. I promise to love you and love you even more when I hate you. However, in recent years, the Philippines being a predominantly Catholic country, churches from all over the nation have disallowed personal vows to be exchanged during the ceremony. The reason being is that the Catholic clergy decided that the formal rites within the ceremony, the I do part and the grant us O Lord part, is sufficient to solemnize the wedding sacrament. Carlos, did you come here of your own free will to bind yourself forever in the love and service of your wife, Maris? Father. <coughs> yes, father. Yes, father. Yes, father. On a shallow and selfish level, that really sucks for me as a wedding videographer. It's like taking away one of the most visually interesting, emotionally charged parts of a film. The cornerstone, the crux, gone and kaput. In a lot of cases, actually most cases, the vows actually lay down the groundwork for the editing flow and the story I'm trying to build. However, in real world experiences, in the past so many years, although Catholic church heads have suggested to stick to the formal Catholic rites, it's really the call of the celebrating priest at the end of the day. And for the most part, if briefed properly, our good and kind priests would allow personal vow exchanges towards the end of the wedding where the mass is technically over just before or after the kiss. So my point being, if you're Catholic and want to exchange personal vows at the church, ask the priest ahead of time if you can. Your mileage may vary, of course. That's why I always suggest getting a minister you already have a personal relationship with. Now, everything I've said so far only applies to you and is relevant to you if you're Catholic. If not, then you have the greenest of green lights in terms of personal vows. In some way, this is why Christian ceremonies hold a dear place in my heart. More often than not, it's more personal and intimate. Of course, this is not to say that Catholic ceremonies are bereft and void and are lacking in emotion. Of course, never said that, never will. It's just that Christian ceremonies have that extra oomph 
you know what I mean. But of course, just to drive home the point, I've had tons, hundreds, thousands of wedding ceremonies in a Catholic church, which are very, very emotional, which are also intimate, which are also personal. I just want to make that clear. Now, let's go back to Catholic ceremonies. What if you ask your priest and then he declined? I mean, what can you do? You don't want to face eternal damnation, right? That's a joke. I kid, I kid, I kid. Strike. There are workarounds, of course. You can still write your own vows and exchange them after the ceremony outside the church, someplace quiet and private. I've also seen vows exchanged during the start of the reception. Also acceptable, but I'm old school this way. It doesn't have the same emotional heft or weight, you know, with a big stage there, bright lights, and a big LED behind you. It just hits different, but that's just me. In the past years too, couples have opted to exchange letters and vows in the morning before they go to the ceremony venue. I like this option too because from a videographer's standpoint, the bride and the groom are in their most anxious and vulnerable state at that point in time. Reading what they wrote or reading what was written for them is a surefire catalyst for emotions to run free, making for great wedding cinema. Again, very selfish. Time out. Editor Jason here, uh, Jason from the future. I was already putting together this uh, vlog when I felt the need to reiterate that with or without personal vows, you are going to have a wonderful, beautiful, excellent wedding video. It's just that I feel that it's a major component of the wedding story. All right, back to past Jason. At this point, let me negate everything I've said so far and provide a counterpoint. Something I get asked a lot is, Jason, do we have to write letters? Do we have to exchange vows in front of everybody? We're very shy people. To which I always answer, if you're asking me if you have to, I'm going to say, no, you don't have to. It would be nice, yes, but I would never ever require that of my clients. What I will say is that if not then, when? That's what the wedding is for promises, commitment, assurances. You don't have to, but it would be nice if you did. And it's always a nice moment to be able to share these promises, these vows to your closest family and friends, the people you invited to your wedding. And I will always, always emphasize, you never do it for the videos and the photos, not for the photographer, not for the videographer. You do it for yourself, for your partner, for friends and family. Never do it for anybody else.